Welcome to Santa Pod Raceway for round five, a glorious aerial view of the racetrack. As Russ said, we'll be concentrating on pro stock and top fuel, but take a look at this for a piece of action coming later in the show. Well, the weather here in Santa Pod is over 27 degrees. It's great conditions for attracting the crowds in their thousands, and the good air means high horsepower for the drivers. Well, all in all, it looks like today we're going to have a fun-filled day of racing here at Santa Pod Raceways in the United Kingdom. Let's start with Pro Stock. Michael Malmgren, you remember, is contesting second place in the championship. Also in that contest, this man, Yari Konala. Well, I don't think either of these drivers would have chosen the other for a quarter-final opponent. More corporate sponsors arriving for what's been a very busy weekend here at Santa Pod. Well, hot news from this race. Not only is Michael Malmgren the number one qualifier, but also qualified with a new European record for Pro Stock, a 7.061 second run. We could be on for six second runs here in Eliminations. This, of course, the first of our quarterfinals. Yari Connella in the far lane, Panasonic's Michael Malmgren. Connella, the first into pre-stage. Well, Malmgren edges the Oldsmobile forward. Into pre-stage, well, this is where the drivers really are. Very, very tense indeed. Such a precise manoeuvre, you can see Connella moving into stage. Margaret follows him, and the green, well, nothing to choose, but it looks to be Connella out ahead. Here comes the Oldsmobile, wow, right on the line. I think Michael Margaret indeed just took that one. Krista and the boys celebrate. Well, in slow motion, you can see a great launch from Malmgren. But in fact, Connella was the man out the hole first, and that translates to a lead at half track. But the power of the Oldsmobile working perfectly comes round. Connella takes the win. A bye run for rising star Jakob Ferrer. Qualified well at number two here this weekend with a 7.10 second time. A far cry for this car spinning on its roof in Sweden in 1998. Definitely going to be the man to watch is Jakob Ferrer in the year 2000. While Jakob goes safely through into the semi finals, this has got to be. Regarded as an easy matchup for the Wolf, Nicholas Anderson already crowned as the FIA Pro Stock Champion. Russ joins me here in the commentary position. How do you rate Magnus Hansen's chances, Russ? Well, Magnus beat Shettlehauer in an earlier round, so uh, he's obviously on some form this weekend, but uh, I can't see him beating Nicholas. Well, relatively inexperienced. Nicholas Anderson straight, well, you can see Hansen straight into stage there, backs the car out of stage. So let's start again. A very precise manoeuvre. Rolling forward into pre stage. Nicholas Anderson waits. Rolls right through stage. Well, Anderson stages. Well, back up goes Hansen. The starter having no more truck with that. Presses the go button. Sends Nicholas Anderson through on a by run, in effect, into the semi finals. Well, Hansen must be gritted his teeth and wondering what on earth went wrong there. So, so unusual. Take a look at this. Both cars were in stage, but then Hansen moves again as the starter presses the button. What did you make of that, Russ? I think he must have left it in reverse as he rolled forward, but uh, most unusual. I can't imagine what he was thinking about. Well, I don't think it will worry Nicholas Anderson too much. He's through into the semi-final and for a bye run. Uh, Magnus Hansen follows him down the track. You can see these are our semi-finals. Michael Malgren still after second place. Races Jakob Ferrer, Anderson with the bye. It's top fuel time. Gordy Bonin, you are now the 1999 FIA European top fuel champion. How do you feel? Pretty special. Pretty special to be able to come over here and do this. What we did in five races, uh, Prolong did not expect to come over here and win the championship. We'll take it. We've, we've worked real hard 
at doing this and uh, uh, yeah, unfortunately Barry didn't give us the run that we expected to give him with the new car blues but uh, we'll take it just the same and we'd love to come back next year and defend our title. This is qualifying on Saturday. Not only did Gordy Bonney take number one spot, but ran the first four-second run of 1999 with a 4.99. I think that it broke a connecting rod right, at, right before the finish line. This was, this was not expected otherwise. I mean, it's, it was just a nice, normal, easy run. The thing had a nice, easy tune-up on it. And we think it broke a connecting rod. It was not an oiling problem. Uh, it just it just kicked a rod out right before the finish line. First round of racing proper, the champion, Gordy Bonin, out racing longtime legend and number six qualifier from Sweden, Pelle Lindelu. Well, Pelle qualified with a new combination in the car, lots of new fuel induction parts, and you can see sporting one of those Peter Lands buck catchers high up on top of the car. For Gordy Bonnet, well, everything had been going to plan. He was already the champion. This was out for fun. How did you read the race, Russ, that was coming up? Well, I think that Pella really isn't in the championship, to be quite honest. Gordy has now got it under his belt, so uh, Gordy's going to be wanting to try and break that 300-mile-an-hour record. Well, we'll be looking out for that one, of course. In Europe, no one over the magic 300 miles an hour mark. Could it be Gordy Bonnick going to be the first to put a car in that range? Here we go. Just the same applies that very precise eight-inch roll forward. Lindelow into stage. Gordy Bonnick stayed to the grid. Well, look at that ballet. Something breaking on the car, I think. Over by the track. Bonnick shuts it off. Well, that was a real, real turn up for the books. I think Lindelow, look at the way the car reacted there away from the line. Before the tree ran, Gordy Bonin with a 5.08 clicks it off to 250 miles an hour. On to our next race in the quarterfinals. Number two qualifier, Peter Lance and Robin Reed with the Elite B car. You know a little bit about that car, Russ. Well, only that Bill Schultz, who's the chap, I think on the left-hand side of the picture there is the guy that tunes Robin Reed's car. Both of these drivers are a bit unknown as far as this race is concerned, but uh, my money would go on Robin Reed. Well, Peter Lance has been out of the saddle for quite a while, has had a little bit of a sabbatical away from top fuel with higher drivers. Number two qualifier, though, but you can't discount Reed. Lots of experience, both cars very quickly in free stage. And it's Robin Reed who moves into stage first. Lance follows him on the green. Well, up in smoke goes Peter Lance. Robin Reed is away and takes the win. Well, they'll be pleased with that one. This is our final quarter-final. Jens Diebold against wins Barry Sheevels. For those that remember, Graham, of course, this is a rerun of last year's championship final when Barry was racing Jens Nebo for the 98 series uh, title. Of course, Barry went on to win that one, but he's been having all sorts of problems this year. Well, basically, uh, we brought the brand new car over from the States with all the uh, latest technology, and uh, it's just been too powerful for the tracks in Europe, unfortunately. We have had a lot of gremlins along the way, new car gremlins, new combination, but uh, here we are at Santa Pod, and this is the finals, and we're almost there. Well, very different circumstances indeed from 98. Barry, though, number three qualifier. Everything finally going well for the team. Jens qualified in at number four. The crew chiefs, well, ever so busy outside those cars. New paint job as well for Jens Nebo. Barry sits in that beautifully decorated winds car and must feel he'd love history to repeat itself. Well, problems before the cars went into stage, Rune Fjeld having to push the rods to get Barry's car into forward gear again. Here we go, Jens Nebo already waiting in pre-stage. Barry rolls the car forward quickly. Well, what has that done to the calmness that the drivers need? Who's going to be the first into stage? Barry edges into stage. Nebo follows him in. It's history to repeat itself. Both cars away from the line. Barry pedals it, smokes the tyres. Both cars have clicked off. Look at this. Problems for Nebo. Takes the win at the walk. 
well, almost unbelievable. Take a look in slow motion. Barry Sheevil's wheel is out the hole. A 0.55 reaction time. Smokes the tires, comes off the power. Risks it by going in again and clicks it off. Gets Debo already out of it. That's about sums up my season, I think. Um, we know the car's got all the horsepower and we just overpowered the track again and there's nothing you can do. You don't go anywhere if the tyres are smoking. And I uh, tried to pedal it a couple of times and, uh, you know, I mean, <sighs> what a year. Um, we know we've got the quickest and fastest car in Europe. We just have never got the power to the track and uh, totally and utterly disappointed. <laughs> Well, we'll be back next year, and I think for sure uh, they'll get the car to work. And when the car works, I think you'll see some real surprises and times that uh, have never been seen outside of America. So uh, we're really confident that next year we'll hook it all together. Semi-finals still to come. The champ has a bye run into the final. Robin Reed races Denmark's Jens Nebo. Well, of course, Nicholas Anderson, already crowned as champion for 99, has a bye run into the final, and the Wolf won't waste any time in making sure that all the data for the computer needed every time these cars run down the track is absolutely complete. Doesn't hang around, runs a 7.113. This is the race that's really going to count, though, Russ. Well, Michael Malgram in the blue Panasonic car, is fighting for second place with Jakob Ferrer. The winner of this race will effectively be second in the championship. But the interesting thing is that Jakob Ferrer is now racing out of the same stable as Michael Malmgren. So will there be any team orders? Who can say? I regard Ferrer as the rising star of 1999. Definitely could have been a man to watch. Michael's very happy with the new European record and I think feeling real comfortable in the car now, Russ. This is going to be right down to the wire. Both nerves are going to be jangling. I have a sneaky feeling that Ferrer maybe just has the edge on horsepower. Here we go, Ferrer into pre-stage. Mike Malmgren follows him in. First car to stage, then Jakob Ferrer notches it forward. Firebird plays Oldsmobile, Carlos on the green! Well, a great launch from Malmgren, but look at Ferrer, a half-track, is still there. Who's going to take it right on the line? It looked to be Ferrer. Well, that's a real, real disappointment for Panasonic. And uh, look at Ferrer carry the front wheels. You can see at the half-track, nothing to choose in it. The quicker reaction time for Malmgren. But look, it's the time that counts the horsepower of that Firebird just pulls him through. We drove through the clutch. We had a lot of tires being uh, in other runs, and uh, obviously we did too much radical change to try to get the car to grip, and uh, the thing helped, but we drove through the clutch completely. It, it slipped real bad second and third, so we had the slowest run of the whole weekend, which it's a bad time to use in the semifinals. This sets up our final of the final race. Jakob Ferrer, Nicholas Anderson. Into our semi-finals of top fuel, Jens Nebo burns out. The man from Denmark racing Great Britain's Robin Reed up this side of the ladder. Robin Reed, his first semi-final in top fuel, and I'm sure relishing it here at Santa Pod, Russ. Well, Santa Pod is absolutely rammed this weekend. I would say over 20,000 spectators have come to see the racing, and a lot of people would have come to see these cars, the top fuel monsters. You can absolutely cut the air with a knife, not only because it's full of nitromethane fumes, but also the tension these cars create. They're an inner body experience. You have to be there to feel them. Jens edges forward into pre-stage. Robin Reed joins him there. You can see that view of the sharp front end of these 300 miles an hour monsters. Robin Reed edges into pre-stage. Here we go. The cars go on to full fuel system. Robin Reed notches forward into stage. The chief starter notches a bit on the green. Well, look at this. Robin Reed out ahead. Yet Steve trailing at this point. Whoa, takes the win. Whoa, and a big fire. Look at that. Robin right in the midst of that. Well, that was an incredible explosion there, Graham. Robin is still stuck in the car. He's moving. I can see him trying to get out of the car. 
it could catch fire. I can't quite see because of the crew here, but Robin appears to be out and OK. Well, you can see a singe, but glad to be out of that car, Robin Reed. But still, there's a threat. The fire marshals haven't got that under control yet. You can see they go in without a thought for their own safety. Well, that was exciting, but not the ideal way to win the race. Robin Reed, you can see, out ahead all the way. A quicker reaction time takes the win from Jens Nebo, and then that elephant motor just disassembles itself with a bang. They always used to say you couldn't get burnt sitting in front of the engine. I'm glad to report Robin's OK if a little singed. Gather I've lost my braves and I must have breathed in some smoke and changed the colour of my fire suit a bit, but, yeah, I'm OK. It's this. It won't... I'll be back. Robin threw into the final, joined there by Gordy Bonin, who ran a problematical bye run in the semi. The final in Pro Stock, The Wolf and The Rising Star. Let's have a word with FIA promoter Keith Bartlett. I have to sort of do this. It's becoming a repetitive story for 1999 Pro Stock. Nicholas Anderson, he seems unbeatable. Well, we'd all agree with Keith, but Jakob Ferrer has improved dramatically this year and will want to make a sign or at least a gesture by winning here to show his intent to take the championship next year. Well, I would say Ferrer, maybe with the faster car on this particular weekend, both cars in pre-stage. Well, Ferrer in pre-stage. Anderson follows him in, but makes him wait a little while. Jakob Ferrer edges forward in stage. Anderson now, the Wolf goes into stage. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Ferrer had to make a move. A red light goes before the green. Hands the win in the final race to the champion, Nicholas Anderson. Well, the question is here, do you think Jakob Ferrer would have won had he not red lit? Undoubtedly, I mean, that reaction time was destined to be a point four zero. Just a pity it was the wrong side and drew the red light. Nicholas Anderson, though, proving he's a worthy champion. It's fantastic win here, and that's run it was easy. Jakob here, red light, and so it was cool, so... So we win here, and... I will thank my team for a great job, man. It's fantastic, and I think England it is my lucky track. At the end of the championship, Nicholas Anderson takes back-to-back -back wins. Jakob Pereira in second place. Michael Malmgren will have to wait for another year. <laughs> Gordy Bonin, top fuel champion, but it's been a team effort. <laughs> So, Bob, you're one of the men behind Gordy Bonin. You've come over here, and in your first year, you've become the FIA European Drag Racing Champions. How did you do it? Well, uh, some good racing luck, Russ, and uh, we partnered ourselves with an excellent team, with Brunefeld, and uh, it's just turned out to be a kind of a storybook finish, not only for Gordy as the driver, but for Prolong as a company new to the FIA European Championship. The platform of the FIA Championship, uh, it's ramping up. The best days for this type of racing is yet to come. I see a very enthusiastic fan base, and when other sponsors discover the type of reception that Prolong has enjoyed this season, I have no doubt that there are great things for the future of this series. Gordy Bonin then burns out the car for possibly the last time in 1999. The final. Racing Great Britain's Robin Reed and the elite team have the car all back together again, ready to race. They're not letting the American get away with anything. Let's have a word with Keith Bartlett. We all knew Gordy was running. He's won the championship. We knew he would come here feeling confident, running strong. But the surprise of the whole weekend is Robin Reed. Bill Schultz has tuned that car and put the car back together from the other car that crashed in Hockenheim two weeks ago. And they came out here today and just put down just incredible numbers. And right now, Robin Reed's going to take a lot of beating. Both these drivers have had an ordeal so far this weekend. We saw Robin Reed getting torched at the end of the track, but Gordy Bonin also had a lucky escape when he stripped the hub of the top field dragster that we're looking at here, which could have sent him into the barrier. So both these guys are probably a little bit nervous. Well, look at that problem found just before the start of his bye run in the semi-final. So both cars now load up for bear. 
Nobody giving anything to anybody else. Robin Reed for Great Britain. Gordy Bonin for the United States, already the champion. But I know Robin would love to lift this race away from the champion. Here we go then, the nitro thick in the air. Robin Reed heads towards pre-stage. Looks like he's very, very eager to get on with this race already into pre-stage. Gordy Bonin there. Well, Robin Reed follows him in. This is where the tension mounts. This is the final of Top Fuel. Who's going to be the first into stage? Well, Gordy Bonin moves in, anxious to race. Robin moves him in the green. Both cars away together. The lead with Gordy Bonin. That clicks it off a half track. Incredibly, Robin Reed takes the win. And yet another fire. Well, fortunately, the fire's put itself out. Yes! The teams celebrate a great win by Robin Reed. Well, everybody ecstatic up at that top end. Well done to Robin Reed. You can see Gordy Bonny very quick out the hole. Pedaled the car, though. You can see quicker reaction time for the American. Robin right there with it. Then something lets go on the prologue car. And Robin makes it through right at the finish. Congratulations! You won. What, what a... can I say? What can I say? Nothing this more but a, a fiery this situation. A well, <clears throat> I believe in America they call this deal winning ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Any way it comes, I'll take it. I mean, this is my rookie season in top fuel. To win the European finals meeting is... It don't get better than this. Gordy Bonin then takes the championship. Robin Reed overtakes teammate Alan Jackson for second place. Barry Sheevels finishes fourth. Welcome to Santa Pod Raceway, our cameraman having a grandstand view of the whole venue from the helicopter. You can see how many people are crammed in Santa Pod for this, the final round of the FIA European Drag Racing Championship. Lots of them have come to see these guys, the top methanol funny car pilots, no more popular than this man, Lex Jon for Holland, and the man who would be champion, Quaker States, Miki Kagaran. Russ joins me in the commentary position, this is a very important race, Russ. Mickey Kagrad leads the championship at the moment, but only just in front of Leif Andreasen, who's going to come out later. The fact is that Mickey Kagrad has got to win this race if he thinks he's going to win the championship. So the pressure is definitely on Mickey Kagrad in the green car. Well, Michael didn't qualify as well as he might have done. Only the number four qualifier, Lech Young qualified in at number five. So this potentially the closest race of this round. Well, Lech Young knows he's got to make a move on Michael Kagaran very well, but not quite a move as that. Lech Young away, a very obvious red light indeed. And Michael Kagaran gratefully cruises down with the Camaro following Lexion and takes the win into the quarter-final. I bet Michael was absolutely worried, if I can put it that way at that point, Graham. If he saw Yoon taking off like that, he could have seen his championship going up in smoke. Well, of course, he wouldn't be aware of the red light until that wind light came on in his lane. Well, here are a pair of contenders. New man to me. This is Uwe Gunderson, and he's racing the Viking. Leif Helander. Helander never gives anything away. This unique Saab body funny car has been one of the quickest runners in Europe all year. He's the second man into stage on the green line. Well, Gunderson got the shot on Helander. Helander runs all the way up the wall but takes the win. That was a close one, Russ. It's very close and it's also quite significant because Holland has gone through and Holland certainly has the ability to beat Leif Andreasen or Mickey Kagrad if he meets them later on in the semis. Well, of course, five second form here at the European finals for Holland. People are going to be worried about him big time. Coming up the same side of the ladder are this pairing, the reigning top methanol funny car champion Leif Andreasen and he's racing a relative unknown in Ulf Leanders with the Mustang. Well, as Michael Kagarad has gone through, Leif Andreasen must go through if he's going to keep the series alive. I'd like him to go through because it's going to be nail-biting as we progress to the semis, but Andreasen will meet Helander, and he won't be keen on that. Well, as Russ was saying, the pressure really on Andreasen here has to go round Leanders and then the prospect of Helander. Well, 
We'll see what happens. This is going to be quite a race. I wonder how much the pressure's going to get to Leanders. Both cars in free stage. Well, here we go. Leanders moves into stage. Andreas and follows him at the green. Well, Leanders goes nowhere. Andreasen must breathe a big sigh of relief and takes that win. Well, you can see in slow motion, Andreas and the second man to stage. The tree runs down. He leaves the start line. But there's no sign of Leanders at all. In fact, Leanders, you can see, had moved but then stopped. So, quicker reaction time, a 6.13 second run. Andreasen through to the semi finals. Our next pairing. Well, this is Urs Embacker with the Hawaiian car and number one qualifier with the Pontiac Firebird. Urs Embacker, this and all Switzerland matchup. And you can see the kind of form that Embacker's on with the green car here this weekend. Mercilessly thrashes Embacker. Well, this sets up our semi finals Urs Embacker and Michael Kagarad, Leif Hollander and Leif Andreasen. Well, just like in top methanol funny car, the top methanol tracks as the championship not decided yet. Dark Horse and number one qualifier, Aero Kilpelinen burns out with the Gold car. Racing number eight qualifier here this weekend, Carrie Eskalinen. Well, this is going to make some changes to the championship, Russ. Well, both of these drivers are further down the leaderboard. They don't really have much chance of coming on the podium. But I would say that Aero Kipalainen on past form could take this win. Well, indeed, number one qualifier with a new European record of 5.708 for him really has become the surprise of the championship. Both cars in pre stage, into full stage, Kilpelainen, the last man in, and Carrie Eskalinen out ahead of half track. But look at the power the gold cars make. He takes the win with a 5.69 through into the semi finals. Well, in this race, you can see the quicker reaction time from Kilpelainen, but the car not as quick over the first half of the track. Certainly makes up for it in the second half. Well, this is going to be a real, real interesting race. The championship is at stake for this one, and it's Great Britain's Dave Wilson with the Nemesis car, who qualified in at number four. That must have been a little disappointing, but, of course, he's racing this man, the number five qualifier, Peter Schürfer from Germany. We know all about Peter with that enormous supercharger on that small-block Chevrolet engine. Makes an awful lot of horsepower, makes an awful lot of noise too. This is going to be a goodie, both cars in free stage. Well, nobody moving, Dave Wilson edges in. Peter Schofer follows him, and the green, well, anybody at this point, surely this is where Wilson makes a move indeed. Peter Schofer drops off, Dave Wilson takes the win through into the semi-final. That was shaping up to be a great race, but something happening to Peter at half-track. You can see the red car slows off, but Dave Wilson doesn't know, going through to take the win with a 5.82 second run. Number seven qualifier, Doug Bond with the Shell Sport car. Always a game competitor, but importantly, Russ, this is Yamo Roivas in the first round of eliminations. Dave Wilson will be watching this race with intent, because if Yamo loses, Dave Wilson, if he gets to the final, could take the championship. If Yamo wins this race, he'll clinch the series. Well, he can't afford to make any mistakes here on the start line. Doug Bond, a seasoned campaigner. Both cars in pre-stage. Dougie Bond rolls forward. Yamo pulls him into the green. You'd expect Yamo to be out ahead. And indeed, that's exactly what's happening. Powers it through, takes the win with a 5.78. Russ, I would imagine there's quite a lot of relief in the Roivas camp after that win. Well, he is the FIA European top methanol dragster champion. Well, all congratulations to the team from Finland. And they wrest away the championship from Peter Beck, who appears in our final pairing, racing this man, a relative unknown to us, and that is Kim Jurgensen. Well, I don't envy him racing in this first round, one of the quickest men of Europe. And, of course, I'm talking about Switzerland's Peter Beck, the number three qualifier. 
Well, Peter hasn't had a good season at all after taking the championship last year. He won at Santa Pod in the first round, but then it's gone downhill ever since. Well, the revs go up on the back guard of the green line. Well, Beck looks to be behind at this point. And Jurgensen gave him a race to half track, but the power there, the tuning in that car shows at the end. Well, you can see that Jurgensen was the first man out the hole, a quicker reaction time, and that will, of course, Peter Beck some concern. He'll have had a good view of the black and red car until the finish line. That sets up our two semi-finals. Aero, Kilpaline and the Dark Horse and Dave Wilson, Yamo Rovers, new champion, and Peter Beck. Take a look at this, one of our exhibition vehicles put on specially for the spectators. And have you ever seen a Mustang like this in your life before? Jet powered, Martin Hill cloaked in that carbon fiber Ford Mustang body, Westinghouse J34 engine. And does he make good use of the afterburner on that car? You bet your life he does. Shooting flame out like a cannon report. And everybody, apart from the staff in race control, absolutely love this car. Take a look at that. Wow, scorching down the sandbook quarter mile. Fantastic. The first of our semi-finals, an all-Quaker state affair, the Fat Attack. Firebird of Urs Erbacher, the Quaker State Express Camaro of Michael Kagarad. This is an important race, but let me tell you, Russ, Erbacher is in a rich vein of form. He certainly is, but I still think Michael will take this win. He's got to take this win, otherwise he's going to be living on his nerves as well, Leif Andreasen goes out in the next semi. All right, you are. Takes it out of his hands. Here we go, both cars in free stage. The revs come off. The Camaro into stage. Well, the Firebird follows him in, and the green, nothing to choose. But look at this, Airbacker is away. There's no catching him this weekend. And even champion-elect Michael Kagarad back into the trailer with that car. You can see even a quicker reaction time, another five. Big upset there, but I think Erbacher did hold Kagrat a little bit on the line, similar to Leif Andreasen doing the same thing to him in Norway. Well, Michael must be getting used to it by now. This is going to be a good race. Leif Andreasen knows what he has to do now if he's going to stay in the running. He's got to beat this man, Leif Helander, with the red, white and blue Saab, where you can see a very partisan crowd and they're all very keen to know how the championship's going to turn out. Right down to the wire, Andreasen with the Komasa Tools car, the star cotter Saab of Leif Helander. First in the pre-stage, Andreasen follows him in. Well, and doesn't waste any time into full stage. Well, got stage on the green. Nothing to choose between them at half track. What a great race you can see, though. Helander slows. Andreasen had to take the win and dutifully does so through into the final. Well, Helander was right there, a quicker reaction time away from the start. Something breaking on the car, obviously, at half track. Slows down Andreasen there into the final. Well, that sets up that final. Leif Andreessen has to take the win against Urs Erbacher. Miki Kagarad has to sweat it out. Take a look at this drama from one of the cool funny car races over the weekend. John Spuffard takes the win. Gordy Smith, you can see a small explosion, but watch this. Whoa, the fuel tank explodes on that car. John Spuffard right in that carbon fiber body. And you can see a big lump of bodywork. Look how quickly the driver exits through that hatch. You can see the heat haze rising. But for John Spuffard, that's all in a day's work. Take a look at that. Is it hot out there or what, John? The fire crews very quickly on the scene. And John was A-OK. -okay. to the drama of our top methanol dragster. Semi-finals, 
Peter Beck and Yamo Roivas. This is going to be quite a race. Well, Beck is last year's champion and Roivas is this year's champion. I say Beck has not been on form this year, but it'll be interesting to see who can win heads up. Well, Yamo's had a horrible weekend. Missing Magnetos for the car meant that it wasn't until the final session that he managed to qualify near the top of the pack. In fact, ending up as the number two qualifier behind Kilpalainen. So lots depending on this. Has Yamo Roivas got the form back? Can Peter Beck steal the show from him here at the finals? Both cars roll into stage, waiting for Beck. Beck rolls it in at the green one. Beck looks to be away first, but Yamo Roivas powers past him at half track. The champion takes the win through into the final. Good reaction by Beck at the lights. He beats Roivas away, but again, his motor lets him down. Well, I get the feeling that Peter Beck and team are down at the bottom of the barrel when it comes to engine parts. Been a hard year for the top methanol tracksters. This then, our second semi-final for Great Britain, Dave Wilson, and the man who's a definite rising star, Russ, Aero Kilpalainen. Methanol racing is getting very competitive. More cars coming into the series. Bodes very well for next year. Well, of course, the championship decided this is going to be for glory. Dave Wilson would dearly like to race Yamo Rivas in the final. Kilpalainen, though, is the form man. Both those cars roll forward into stage together. On the green, Dave Wilson out ahead by a car's left. Well, Yamo seems to be asleep on the line, stays with him all the way. Dave Wilson takes the win. Let's look at reaction times. Well, you can see a 0.57, almost two tenths of a second given to the Briton. You can see Kilpalainen with the quicker time. Too slow on the day. Wilson through into the final. Well, there he's going to meet Yamo Roivas, the man who is champion. That's going to be a good race. Racing's been around for over 60 years. It's a fast and furious sport, certainly not one for the faint-hearted. Nevertheless, if you feel like travelling at speeds of over 200 miles an hour in around 4.5 seconds isn't for you, fear not, because you can still bring your own car down to the Santa Pod Raceway so long as you have a driver's licence and an MOT certificate where you can kiss goodbye regular speeds and test your own car to its limits. Well, not only cars here at the European finals, this, the final on two wheels of FIM Fuel Harley Davidson. Per Benson and Rob Van Geffen, just listen to the noise these nitro burners make. Absolutely earth-shattering. Rob Van Geffen has problems. Per Benson takes the win with a 6.83 second run over 200 miles per hour. He's a happy boy. Well, that also makes Benson the Harley Twin Super Twin champion of 1999. So he's going to be a happy man. Well, indeed, we look forward to more two-wheel action in 2000. It was... Uh... Very close uh, in the beginning. Yeah. But uh, after 200 meters, I left him, and uh, then I didn't see him. And I think he got some problem. Michael Kagarad. All he can do is stand and wait and watch the final of Top Methanol Funny Car to see if Leif Andreessen can take this final win that will make him the champion. Leif, a win in the final would give you the championship. Yeah, we think we think we have the power. Urs is running real hard also. He just put a 593. And uh, we know that we have power to run even faster than that. And uh, we put all the power on the car that we can use now. And hopefully we're going to run for it. I don't know. Well, let's not forget, up against the informed man from Switzerland, Urs Airbacher. The heat's on this race. It's not just the final. It's a final for Urza Backer to win her at Santa Pod. More importantly, it is the championship for Leif Andreasen. My opinion is Leif can win it, but nerves will take a large, large part of this race. If Leif can keep his nerve, keep his cool, cut a good light, he may take the whole lot. But Urza Backer is in his element on this track. 
That's going to be a real, real close race. At the moment, I have to just say, if Lace Andreasen keeps his call, he'll win. Well, I think Keith has summed it up there. The pressure is so much on Leif that uh, he could make a mistake at the lights or just err on the side of caution. Urs has got nothing to lose. He'll go for it. While both cars roll forward to the line, I'm sure Andreasen knows how much defence on this. Both in free stage, the revs go up on the funny cars. Who got Andreasen in? Airbacker follows him on the green. Well, looks to be Airbacker ahead at this point. Very close race, Andreasen, no, Urs Airbacker. What a race, what a race. Kagarad is the champion. Michael Kagrad is the funny car champion for 99. Well, that 47 reaction time for Urs Airbacker really did it. You can see a slower time, but stayed out ahead of Andreasen all the way down the quarter mile. But how close is that at the end, Grab? Drag racing at its best. Leif, a big disappointment. Oh, it's not actually so big. I mean, everything, the whole, the whole season has been so tight. We've been running good, but at the same time, uh, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to lose, but uh, it was so close. The final placings in the championship. Michael Kagarab by just five points from countryman Andreasen. Helander and Airbacker three and four. Now, Michael, you had to sit on the sidelines and wait to see how it unfolded. How did it feel? I was very nervous and uh, I couldn't do anything about it, so I was very nervous. So what went wrong in the semi-finals? We uh, shook tires, spun tires, uh, so I had to lift and uh, Ursi Abashe did a very good time. So we couldn't uh, we couldn't beat him. So in the final, Leif had to win. Did you have a word with us and say, "Listen, mate, you've got to help me here"? Yeah, I spoke to him and uh, a little bit, but uh, yeah, I said to him, "You had to win now," and uh, he did that. <laughs> we go into our final in top methanol tracks of the championship is already decided. Yamo Rovers, the champion for 1999. But this is going to be for Dave Wilson's honour. The Nemesis car burning out. And this has to be one of the biggest moments in Dave Wilson's long top methanol tracks to career. I think Dave Wilson could really take this race. He's his home track. He knows it. And they'll go all out in this last race. Well, Dave Wilson here has already secured second place by getting through to this final, but he'll want to show a sign of intent by beating Royvis to show that next year the championship could be his. Well, it would be nice to see a reverse for the year 2000. Numbers one and two men in the championship coming up to fight it out for this final. Both cars in pre-stage. The cat car is second in the stage at the green. Well, no quarter asked for and not given. Dave Wilson clicks it off, the shoe comes out. Yamo takes the winner, 5-7-9. That would have been hard to get round. Well, uh, Yamo shoots opened at the right time, but Wilson's didn't. I've never seen that before. Well, I think the tyre shake on the car so bad away from the start line. Take a look at the way the car's moving here. I don't think Dave could see where he was going either. Had to come out the throttle. The shoot's shake now. By that time, what Dave could see, Rivas was over the finish line. But interestingly, a quicker time off the lights for Wilson. Could have won it. We're a great feeling. <laughs> I'm not happy yet. <laughs> very, very hard. Someone special thanks to my team. He worked excellent. And that's nice. <laughs> very nice. Well, the championship finishes up, as we said, numbers one and two, Rovers and Wilson, Peter Beck, third this year. Watch Kilpalina next year. So another excellent year of methanol drag racing. And well done to Yamo Rovers, who becomes our dragster champion. And also well done to Michael Kagrad, who had a nail-biting wait on the sidelines to determine his position in the championships. But of course, he came through and won the championships. Make sure you join us for next year's action in European drag racing.